We will start our study of linear algebra now and take the last three weeks to um, study in the book Linear Algebra by Friedberg, Insel, and Spence. Uh, you have already had some linear algebra. This will be a more theoretical approach to the subject. Um, we're going to study vector spaces. Uh, linear transformations and the matrices that represent them. And we will hopefully have time to use this in solving systems of linear equations. I suggest that you keep the textbook because throughout it are interesting applications of linear algebra, um, which are not, however, central to the math that we will develop. So we will not have time to cover those. So I hope that you will keep the book and um, use it for reference later. Before we begin our study of vector spaces, there's one last thing in abstract algebra that we need, and that is the definition of a field. A field F is a set on which two binary operations are defined. We call them addition and multiplication. Both addition and multiplication are associative. Both addition and multiplication are commutative. There is an additive identity 0 and a multiplicative identity 1. And for each element A in F, there is an additive inverse and there is a multiplicative inverse as long as that element is not 0. So what does this sound like to you? We have a whole lot more structure here. In fact, a field, from what we just read here, a field is a commutative or an abelian group under addition. And if you just throw out zero, it is an abelian group under multiplication. Then property number five here ties multiplication and addition together. And it tells us that A times the sum B plus C is AB plus AC. That is, you know, the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So a field is much more structured than a group with one operation, which may or may not be commutative. Some examples of fields are the real numbers, the complex numbers, the rational numbers, under our usual addition and multiplication. Remember, under multiplication, we're talking about R star, C star, and Q star. Number two, uh, this is called a field ex extension. What we're doing here is taking Q, and this is the notation they use. We're just throwing in the square root of two, and then we just take all possible linear combinations, A plus B times the square root of two, and we have a, a, a field um, that contains that irrational number. Number three, ZP, where P is prime. For example, Z5 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You've worked with this a lot. You know that it is a group under addition, and that, in fact, that if P is prime, that UP is the same as ZP, just taking 0 out. All of the numbers less than P were relatively prime to P. So, again, this is a field. ZP is a abelian group under addition, and if we take out 0, we're left with the UP, and we know that that is an abelian group under multiplication. So it is a field. Note, z, this set of integers, is not a field. It is an abelian group under addition, but, of course, under multiplication, we do not have multiplicative inverses. Now we define a vector space. A vector space v over a field f consists of a set on which two operations addition in V and scalar multiplication. That's when you multiply elements of F to vectors in V. 
two operations are defined so that for each pair x, y in v, there is a unique element x plus y in v. In other words, addition is a binary operation on v. And for each x in v and a in f, those are the scalars, there is a unique element ax in v. And you will find the following properties on page 7 in your textbook. Now he writes out vector space property 1 through vector space property 4, each one very carefully, but if you look at those, all they say together is that the vector space V, the set V, is an abelian group under addition. So V is an abelian group, and if you take X, Y in V, and A, B in F, we call the elements of F, by the way, scalars, and the elements of V, vectors. Well, look at these properties that tie the, that tell us about the scalar multiplication. The property number five says that, well, F is a field, so we know that we have one in it, the multiplicative identity. And if you multiply that to X, a vector, you get X. Property six gives us kind of an associative property, but remember, X is coming from V, and A and B are elements of the field F. So this just says that you can multiply this property here says that you can multiply AB and then do the scalar multiplication to the vector X, or you could multiply B to the vector X and then A. Vector space property 7 says that if you are multiplying a scalar A to a sum of two vectors, you can either add the vectors first and then multiply, or you can multiply and then add. It's a type of distributive property. And so is uh, property number eight. It says that if you're multiplying the sum of two scalars to a vector x, you can add the scalars and then multiply. Remember, you can add an f. It's a group. It's a, an abelian group with respect to addition and multiplication. So you could add the scalars and then multiply, or you can multiply each to the vector x and then add in the vector space. I know that you have studied vector sp the vector space R3, um, three space. When you took three-dimensional calculus, you talked about vectors as having uh, direction and length. Um, however, in our class, we will not be doing much of that. We're going to study it in a more abstract way that covers uh, all vector spaces. So um, if you want to look in the first section of the textbook, I think it's 1.1, he does go over a little of the three-dimensional uh, R3 vector space. One type of vector space is F upper n. It's the set of all n tuples with entries from a field f. And it is, that set of n tuples is, uh, with entries from f is a vector space over f with the operations of coordinate wise addition and scalar multiplication. So I took an example R3. And of course you are familiar with this, I'm sure. If we add vectors in R3. For example, let's just take, um, well, how about 1, negative 3, 4, and we add that to the vector 0, 1, 2. We add component-wise, so we have 1 plus 0, minus 3 plus 1, and 4 plus 2. That's called component-wise addition. And if we want to multiply a scalar times a vector in R3, for example, 2, that's coming from the field R, and we want to multiply that to 1, negative 3, 4. We have, multiplying to each component, we have 2, negative 6, 8. So again, I know you're familiar with this. 
Um, but let's mention one more thing. If we took the complex numbers and all three tuples of complex numbers, we could say that this is, is a vector space over the, complex, the field of complex numbers. We could also say that the three tuples of complex numbers is a vector space over the real numbers. Certainly, if you multiply a real number scalar to a three tuple from C3, you get another three tuple from C3. So we can say that. However, R3 is not a vector space over the field of complex numbers. Try to think, put this on pause, and see if you can see why not. Here's an example of why not. If we took a vector, let's say x, and we call it 1, 1, 0, maybe. That's a vector in R3. Now, the scalars are coming from the complex numbers, so I should be able to multiply i, x, and I would get i, i, 0. But that vector is not in R3. So we say that R3 is not a vector space over the complex numbers, the field of complex numbers. Another uh, vector space that you probably have um, used before is the set of m by n matrices with entries from a field f. And this set of matrices is a vector space over f. The operations are regular matrix addition and the scalar multiplication component-wise. So here it is defined formally. I think it is worth your while to look at this notation uh, that's the only reason I put it here. You're not going to use this notation to add two three by two matrices because you know how to do that. But the notation itself is important because you are trying to learn how to write mathematics and read it. So for two matrices, A, B, in the set of M by, M by N matrices over F and a scalar C from F, we say right here, this is the ijth entry of A plus B will be the ijth entry plus the of A plus the ijth entry of B. Row I, column J. Maybe I should write that down. Row I, column J. And if we multiply the matrix by a scalar, this here the way you read this is the ij entry of C A is equal to C times the ij entry of A. So here I am not going to assume that I'm showing you how to add matrices, but I do want to make sure that you understand this notation. So let's just take the set of two by three matrices, two rows three columns with entries from R. That's what this is, M, two by three, R. So here's an example, A and B. Um, you can look in the book, and if, if, if you have any questions, he's got a lot written in there about the notation of how to put the entries in the matrix. But let's just, um, well, first of all, let's just add A and B. A plus B, you know that you add component-wise. So we'll have... 2, 11, negative 4, and then adding the components in the bottom row, pairwise, we have minus 1, 1, and 4. All right, but now let's do it with this notation up here. Let's just take the, uh, let's take this, a plus b, 1, 3, okay? That means the first row, third entry, first row, third entry. So our notation says that that is 
A13 plus B13. And of course it is. A13 is 0 and B13 is negative 4 and we get negative 4 which was the 1, 3 entry in the matrix A plus B. And multiplying by a scalar, you just multiply each component by the scalar. So 1 half times A, 1 half is coming from the field R, and A is, a, is an element of the vector space, in this case matrix, 2 by 2. So 1 half A, I will just multiply to A each component, and I'll get 1 half, 1 half times 2 is 1, 0, negative 1 half, 1 half, and 3 halves. So make sure that you recall how to multiply matrices by scalars and of course how to add them. So this is kind of an a interesting vector space. Here the vectors, or the elements of the vector space, are polynomials. And they are polynomials with, entry, with coefficients from the field F. So if we took, well, the one you're used to is this, excuse me, P, R. All polynomials with real coefficients. That's the polynomials that you have studied. But let's do a different one instead of P, R. Let's look at P, Z3. That is, all polynomials with coefficients coming from the field Z3. So here, I'll make up a couple of them. Let's say uh, f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x plus 2. And let's say g of x is equal to 2x to the fifth plus x plus 2. Notice the coefficients of f. We have the coefficient of x cubed is 1. The coefficient of x squared is 0. The coefficient of x is 2. And the constant is 2. Likewise, in g of x, the degree of g of x is 5. And the coefficient of x to the fifth, then, is non-zero, and it's 2. Then the coefficient of x to the fourth, x cubed, and x squared is 0. The coefficient of x is 1, and the constant 2. Notice that the degree of the polynomial is not mod 3. It's the coefficients of the polynomials. So uh, just off to the side here, if, if I said, uh, let's let h of x be 2x cubed minus x squared plus 1, well, minus 1 there is the coefficient of x squared. And that's not the usual way to write the additive inverse of 1 in z3. So I wouldn't write it that way. I would write 2x cubed. What is the additive inverse of 1? Well, it's 2. So I would write plus 2x plus 1. Now my coefficients are written in uh, 0, 1, or 2. So just once I wrote these out showing all of their coefficients. Of course, you do this in your head, but this is what you're thinking. So if we add f of x plus g of x here, we will get f plus g of x, or f of x plus g of x is, and we add the coefficients, remember, in z3. So we have 2 plus 0, 2x to the fifth, 0x to the fourth, 1x cubed, so I'll just write x cubed, plus 0x squared, plus 3x, but that's 0x. So 3x is the same, 3 is the same as 0 mod 3. So uh, we don't have any x term, any x, coefficient of x, and we have 2 plus 2, which is 4, mod 3 is 1. So the sum of these is 2x to the fifth plus x cubed, plus 1. Just keep in mind, look for the field and do your uh, addition and multiplication mod 3 if it's z3.
If we want to multiply a vector, in this case a function, a polynomial, by a constant or a scalar, for example, 2g of x, we just multiply each term in the polynomial by 2. But of course, remember, we are in z3. So multiplying 2 times 2, I get 4, which is 1x to the fifth. 2 times 1x is 2x. And again, 2 times 2 is 4, which is 1. So we have x to the fifth plus 2x plus 1. Scalar multiplication. If you look in the text on page 11, you'll see theorem 1.1 and a corollary. But we don't need to prove any of those things because they are just pro proving um, group, group properties that we have already proved in our study in group theory. So uh, we will go directly to theorem 1.2. In any vector space, V, the following statements are true. 0, now we're looking at 0 as a scalar. This, the left, this, this 0 right here is a scalar from the field. And that is 0 times the vector x is equal to the 0 vector. That's kind of hard to see there. I'll put a little hat on it. You remember it's a vector. For all x in v. And one way to prove this would be, uh, let's take 0x plus 0x. And from our properties of vector spaces, we know that that is the same as 0 plus 0 in the field times x. 0 plus 0 in the field is 0. So we get that 0x plus 0x is equal to 0x. Now these are vectors, and it is an abelian group under addition, so we have cancellation property, and therefore it gives us our result that this implies that 0, the scalar 0 times the vector x is equal to the vector 0 in the vector space. Now part b uh, is easy to remember, it's what you would expect, but remember x is a vector and a is a scalar. So let's prove this. The one that I can see right now that I know exactly what it means is this. ax is a vector, and this is the additive inverse of ax. I know that additive inverses in a group are unique. So I'm going to see if I take this one here, minus a, the scalar minus a, additive inverse of a times x, and I'm going to add it to ax and see if I get 0. If I do, then I know that this has to be the additive inverse of ax. So using our kind of distributive property, this is equal to minus a plus the scalar a x. Well, a is in the field. It's a group with respect to addition. Minus a and a are additive inverses. So this is 0x, which we know is the 0 vector from part a. Therefore, this implies that minus ax is equal to the additive inverse of ax. And we'll do the same thing for a times minus x. So let's write a times the vector additive inverse of x, and let's add it to ax. If we get the zero vector, then we know that they're additive inverses, because additive inverses are unique. Well, I'll use again the property, I think it was property 7 or 8, and this is a times minus x plus x. Well, the vector space is a group under addition, and we know that we get the zero vector. So we get a times the zero vector, and that is equal to zero vector. And so it tells us that a times minus x 
is also equal to the additive inverse of AX because additive inverses are unique. The proof for part C, I'll leave for you to do. It's, uh, it's really exactly the same proof as we do, we did for part A. Just remember when you're talking, what's the scalar and what's the vector? Uh, in this case, it's saying that A times the zero vector is equal to the zero vector. Up on part A, it said the scalar zero times any vector is equal to the zero vector. And this is the last example. I wanted to show you an example of one that is not a vector space. Here we're taking, well actually this is R cross R, it's R2, but I'm calling it S, the set of all ordered pairs where both coordinates are real numbers. Under and I put a plus, I put a circle around the plus, not because it's any special kind of operation that always has a circle around it, but it's not our usual addition. So I just indicated that uh, by putting a circle around it. This is, uh, we call it addition in the vector space, and we're saying x1, x2 plus y1, y2 will be the vector with the sum of the first coordinates as its first coordinate and the difference as its second coordinate. And you see scalar multiplication is what you expect, component-wise multiplication uh, by the scalar A. S is not a vector space over R. So I can see two reasons right away. Uh, one is that this operation in V is not commutative. In other words, x1, x2 plus y1, y2 is not equal to y1, y2 plus x1, x2. Why don't you write that out in your notes and make sure that you see that that's true. It's not commutative, therefore it's not a vector space. We've got enough right now. But also notice that that uh, we don't have the associative property. This one, a plus b, the sum of two scalars that are real numbers, um, times the vector x, is not equal to ax plus bx. a plus b x will be a plus b, and I'll write this as x1, x2, which would be using uh, the property of vector spaces, multiplying the a plus b into each component, we get uh, a x1 plus b x1, and then comma a x2 plus b x2. Now let's write a x plus b x. That will be a times x1 x2 plus b times x1 x2, which is a x1 component wise a x2 plus uh, bx1, bx2. And now we use our definition of adding. Remember, this is the a different uh, definition of addition. And we have then our first component is ax1 plus bx1. And the second component is ax2 minus bx2. And so we see that we did not get the same thing here not equal. But the most obvious is just seeing that it's not it's not commutative. So either one of these reasons gives you the fact that S is not a vector space over R.